DevOps Shorts, DevOps Shorts, the show to listen to when your DevOps hurts. And even when you're going strong, it's short and sweet, so come along. Hello, folks, and welcome to DevOps Shorts, the show where we invite wonderful human beings to have a lightning fast conversation about devs, ops, and other mythical creatures. And actually, I realized that this show is more about love, DevOps, and the future, but uh, you, you get it uh, the way you like it. Anyway, the show where each episode is very short it's only 15 minutes long and we only ask three questions it's short and sweet why well because if there's one thing we know it's that great delivery comes in small batches and today i'm incredibly happy to have with me steve Pereira, who calls himself a value stream guy hello steve what does this mean what is it like being a value stream guy <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, that's a very good question and one I, I love to answer. Um, so I've been in tech for about 20 years. I started in tech support. I have been through everything from like build and release engineering before there was DevOps, systems engineering and kind of cloud adoption and migration and then CTO. And the whole time throughout my career, I realized that there was this thread of either not seeing the big picture or eventually realizing that the big picture is the only thing that matters. And uh, the common thread to all of my work was always trying to establish a flow of value and increasingly a continuous flow of value. And that's essentially what value stream thinking and value stream operating models are all about. It's about how do you look at the complete end-to-end -end picture of, we have a concept, we have an idea, we have a product change request, and then you have cash or customer happiness or engagement on the other end, and all the things that go into making that happen. Uh, everything that's involved in the creation and delivery of value, which when I learned about it, just kind of blew my mind and, and presented this opportunity for framing work and looking at work and thinking about work and talking about work that is way beyond DevOps. It's way beyond anything in tech. And so I've just been captivated with that ever since. And that is what I've dedicated my life to. Okay, okay, great answer, uh, very inspiring. And without further ado, let's go into our three questions. And the, this answer was full with love. And the first question is concerned with love. So I have this naive assumption that everybody who comes to the show loves what they do. And this is a question for you. Why, Steve, why do you love being in IT? Tell us, be blunt, be truthful. We want the truth and only the truth. Go. All right. I think this is great. And, you know, I feel very privileged to, to be in this position of talking about loving what I do, because I know that that is still a rare commodity, but uh, hopefully, you know, as time goes on, that, that grows and that becomes more accessible to everybody. And that is part of what I love about information technology. You know, it is one of these things that is unlocking our ability to do what we love, to get closer to creative work, uh, ironically, right? I mean, who would have thought that technology would be unlocking our ability to be creative and not creating robots out of us, right? But I think it's doing the opposite. And um, one of the things about information technology that I love the most is the information side of it, right? More so than the technology side. I think that most of our challenges these days and historically have been from missing information, right? And specifically missing clarity. And I think that IT really promises to address that, even as scale and complexity are rising continuously, right? Everything is getting bigger. Everything's getting more complicated and complex. We're always feeling like we, we know less and less, even as we know more, because we're learning what we don't know. We're learning about unknown unknowns. Um, and all that is really fascinating. Um, but 
I think IT is really unlocking this ability to understand these things, even as we feel like we don't, we don't really understand. And um, the promise really that long-term vision that I see for love and creativity is this idea of being able to level the playing field, right? The ability to create accessibility and inclusivity to make sure that the condition that you're born into isn't the condition that you die in. Uh, to be, you know, big, big picture, but essentially, you know, what is allowing us to, to do what we can do best, uh, to become the best versions of ourselves. And, um, and another piece that I love a lot about this is it's unlocking our ability to collaborate. It's creating opportunities for us to communicate more effectively, to work together. And I think the long-term vision for humanity really is, um, our ability to collaborate is, is key to the survival of the human race, human flourishing. So big, big picture, information technology is the gateway to all of that, the enabler of all of that. And so I'm so excited to be working anywhere close to that um, throughout my life. Okay, okay, I love the sensor. But the, I had a thought uh, while you were speaking uh, our ability to collaborate is definitely key to our survival, but sometimes our collaboration can become destructive. <laughs> and we see this all over. As we humans take over the planet, we bring a lot of destruction. So uh, how do we tackle that? <laughs> uh, great, great question. Well, I would say that that is probably less due to collaboration and more due to feelings of scarcity, feelings of isolation, right? I mean, if, if we are not unified as a species, if we're not seeing the big picture, we're not able to think long-term because we have to worry about the present, we have to worry about the short-term, then our collaboration will be defensive, right? Our collaboration will be small scale, small vision, not thinking about long-term consequences because I, I think that you know, we need, um, we need support and safety in order to really think long-term, right? You need wealth, you need abundance in order to have the luxury of thinking long-term and acting long-term. It's not something that's available to just everybody. You know, you, you have to survive. And you've we've got to get it gong. <laughs> you've got to get up Maslow's yeah. pyramid to do that. We've hit the gong. This is the format. Sorry, Steve. A great answer, but we we'll right. have to go to the next question. And the next question sure. is concerned with DevOps. This is a show about DevOps, after all. So in the DevOps handbook, the authors talk about that moment when they realized that the way things work in IT sucks, but there is a better way, and that way is DevOps, of course. Uh, so this is a question for you. What was that moment, that DevOps aha moment for you, Steve? Go. Yeah, there's so many, this was really hard to pick one, but um, I would say that uh, my big realization was that DevOps is not a thing that we should specifically care about. Um, and, and that might strike people as controversial because I'm a huge fan of, of DevOps and I've been in the space for a very long time, but I don't think that it's particularly important. I think that it's driving the story and it's been very beneficial to us, but in a sense, it's necessary, but not sufficient, right? It's not the answer to anything. It's kind of guiding us towards bigger and better things, unlocking um, bottlenecks and challenges that we've encountered on our road to this idea of continuous value delivery, right? That's the overarching thing. DevOps is kind of this tiny piece, but we needed it, right? And so in, in 2014, I gave a talk at the fifth anniversary of DevOps Days in Ghent, uh, a quick lightning talk, and it was a goofy talk, but essentially the talk was called DevOps is a MacGuffin. And for anyone who doesn't know what a MacGuffin is, it's essentially uh, a mysterious object that drives a story. So in a movie, in, in Pulp Fiction, it's the briefcase. In The Lord of the Rings, it's the ring. In The Avengers, it's the Tesseract. It really doesn't matter what it is, but it drives the story forward. It's the reason why things happen. It's the reason why people come together to solve a problem. And that's where I see DevOps. And that was my aha moment was that don't get too attached to this DevOps thing. 
think about what it represents, think about what it's doing. Uh, the idea that it's really just bringing people together. And the point of the story, the, the reason why we have the story is value, collaboration, and flow. And value really because we have these separate groups with separate incentives, but they value different things and they provide different value. They have to come together. They have to collaborate. And so collaboration is so important because we need to converge these differences, these different incentives. We need to leverage each other's strengths and then flow because we need to do all of this continuously. All of this has to carry on, right? We have to drive the story forward. So that was the big one for me. And, uh, and it's really shaped my perspective on what's beyond DevOps and where DevOps fits in the big picture. Interesting, yeah. Actually, nobody knows what DevOps is, but it's driving the whole story. I like, I like the, the, the metaphor here. Wonderful. Okay, we have some time left from this question, but uh, overall, uh, we don't have a lot of time left. So let's go straight to the next question because it's my favorite one. You see, I like to call myself a software delivery futurist. So you're the value stream guy and there's the software delivery futurist talking to you. We both have weird job descriptions. <laughs> I love it. So <laughs> the next question is about the future. That's why it's my favorite. And uh, this is your chance actually to tell us what you think the future holds for DevOps that thing that's driving us forward, but it's not necessary, as you said, and for the industry as a whole, and maybe for the whole humankind, where do you think we're going? Oh, Go. if we get to human, if I have time for humankind, that's when it's really going to get fun. Um, I have many opinions and we should probably loop back to that, but let's, let's start with DevOps. Um, I, I'm sure anybody, even people who have just listened this far, wouldn't be surprised that my answer is value streams, that looking to value streams, looking at the complete end-to-end -end flow of value throughout an organization is where we're going now. You know, we've, we've tackled DevOps, we've seen a lot of success. People are doing the things that we know work um, with a high degree of repeatability. So we know we've, we've sort of figured DevOps out and so the bottleneck moves now, right? Where is the bottleneck now, now that we've solved the DevOps bottleneck? So um, the value stream is what's gonna reveal that, it's gonna unlock it, and it's different for every organization. That's the, the really inspiring thing for me is that everyone has different value streams, everyone has a different constraint and condition inside of those value streams. And ultimately organizations are really just collections of value streams. And this is the thing that really, uh, unlocks and removes the barrier between business and technology. All of a sudden we can speak the same language. We don't have to say, well, here's, start using this word DevOps, even though we don't know what it means. And uh, I expect you to understand my entire lexicon. All of a sudden with value streams, we have the same vocabulary out of the box, right? People understand value, they understand flow natively, right? And, and, for the specifics, we can talk about them. We can negotiate them very quickly. That's always been the Achilles heel of DevOps was this lexicon problem, right? The terminology being vague. We don't have that problem with value streams. So I think it's super powerful to drive these conversations. And the idea of stream aligned teams and having everyone sort of work within a value stream is gonna unlock velocity, capability, scale, uh, higher performance, everywhere, not just technology, right? We're talking about sales, marketing, hiring, legal, everything thought in the, the, the model of a value stream becomes a superpower. It becomes autonomous, it becomes high-performing, it becomes really easy to reason with and understand. And all of that is kind of driven by systems thinking and creating learning organizations, which I think is growing slowly, but really challenging still. Um, I love the idea of collaborative mapping as a way of bringing these different perspectives together and getting people to collaborate really effectively. Um, so I hope to see a lot of more of that. And, and that's a lot of the driving vision behind visible is making that accessible to people, making it easy for people to do that work. And, um, you know, just the improvement behind adopting scientific principles and experimentation, right? Continuous learning, 
um, small batches, little experiments, and, and being more empirical about what we believe and let's test that and let's learn from it and, and move forward. And then of course we have things like artificial intelligence driving complete change in, in how we work and what we value about work and what we do at work, but, uh, and, and lots of challenges to that, but you know, so much and encouraging here's our value. <laughs> lots of challenges. That, 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 that was a good, uh, <laughs> good finale. <laughs> okay, wonderful, Steve. It was great having you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Talk this to was you a in lot of person fun. one day. I hope so. Yeah. Short and sweet. Thank you for listening and watch out for new episodes of DevOps Shorts.